Thank you. Uh, pleasure to be here, uh, also in person. Um, you know, I want to tell you a bit about what Entrix is, what we do. Um, but before we do that, let me take a short step back, because I think we have been talking about renewables a lot today, but we've mostly been looking at shares and growth rates within, um, within certain industries um, or within certain parts of the renewable space. But I think it's also important to look at the big picture, um, what it means to achieve net zero by the mid of the century. And, you know, the biggest shift from my perspective that we see in the energy industry is this. We are going to grow the electricity demand by the factor of two and a half over the next 30 years. Why? Because entire industries are now shifting to electricity. Mobility, heat, heavy industries, and so on and so forth. And if you want to decarbonize, what we have to do is not only grow the electricity demand by the factor of two and a half, but we also have to increase the share of renewables by a factor of eight. Now, we just started building out renewables over the past 10, 20 years. In the next 30 years, factor of eight. So the energy transition, <laughs> we are nowhere near being done. We actually just started. So far, only the simple part has been done. Yeah? Because actually, two and a half times more electricity, eight, eight times more renewables, this is also meaning that we need to have a major shift in the energy system as a whole. The power system won't work the way it works today anymore. Because two and a half times more electricity means Basically, we need more cables, right? We have much higher energy volumes going through this. And eight times more renewables especially means that the, ent that the entire supply profile suddenly becomes much more volatile. And we come from a world where we can basically switch on and off power plants. They more or less have a switch. But in the future, that's not going to be the case anymore because it's nature telling us when we can get the electricity. Yeah? And that causes huge stress for the power system as a whole and blackouts are becoming a real threat unless we do something. Yeah? But this is exactly what we work on with Antrix. Just to show you a bit what this volatility thing is about and that we are never in balance anymore, this is a snapshot from um, the UK power system on November 11th uh, this, day, uh, this year. Uh, I took that date because I'm from the Rhineland, so I like this day. Um, and what we can basically see is the demand curve, that's the orange one. You know, it's low in the night, it goes up over the course of the day, we have a little bit of a peak in the evening, and then it goes down again. And at the same time, the blue line shows us the supply profile of renewables. It's a bit scaled up, so it matches in total. Yeah, so the integral, so to say, under the curves, they are the same. Demand and supply over the course of the day are identical. But apart from the first few hours of the day, they are never in balance. So what should we do? We can either build out a lot, but that doesn't make sense, or we come up with storage technologies, put them into the field, and take the oversupply, store that, and then discharge it again in moments of undersupply. Yeah, and that's exactly what we do. But the problem here is, this is not that simple. It's not just the sun and wind that says what we have to do, but the storage needs to be controlled smartly. Yeah, because we can actually already see it here. In the first half, like in the night leading into November 11th, Supply was very low, but in the night leading out of November 11th, there was heavy wind, so supply was high. And this is what we basically have to solve with Entrix and with technology. So what is it precisely that we do? In the end, we want to tell batteries when to charge, when to discharge, and we also want to take care of the entire market interaction. So what we effectively do is we take all kinds of data from the energy markets. We take some external data from weather forecasts and the likes, we then come up with a kind of prediction and forecast of the state of the energy system. Yeah, so basically, we want to understand how will this curve that I just showed you look like over the next one or two days. And then based on this, we can tell the batteries what to do at which point of time. Yeah, so there's an optimization running in the background. And you know this chart looks simple, but in reality, that's obviously super complex because this system as a whole is so decentral, it's never steady, it's always moving, that actually quite some information, quite some intelligence has to go into this. Yeah? And then in the end, obviously, we push that to the market, we make bids on the energy markets and the likes, um, and we also make sure that the batteries can actually deliver. That was a bit technical, I know. Uh, I get criticized for this sometimes, that I start with uh, you know, a bit of a technical introduction, so to say. Uh, so let's also talk business. You know, How do we commercialize this in the end? After all, it's quite simple. So we have the battery. They make revenues on the markets. I'm going to explain you in a second how precisely that works. 
And we as Antrix, we are kind of the middleman. So what we do is we rent this battery from an asset owner. Yeah, so it's typically an investor, just the same kind of guys who also invest into renewables. And in return, we get control of the battery and can then deploy it according to the needs of the system as a whole. How do batteries generate revenues? How does that work? Um, let me take the example of the UK. There are two major revenue streams for batteries out there. The first one I call buying low, selling high. That's basically the one that follows from the curve that we saw earlier. Moments of oversupply typically means low energy prices. That's when we buy, that's when we want to charge. Moments of undersupply mean high prices. Yeah, so we want to sell and discharge again. And this is what I love about this business model, because we buy low, sell high, obviously a good business model, yeah, we make money with this. But secondly, that is exactly the thing that also helps the energy system, yeah, that decreases the volatility in the system. Second revenue stream, also good for the energy system, are so-called capacity markets. Basically, it's like a standby service. Uh, standby service. Think of it a bit like an ambulance, so to say. Yeah, so I said the energy system is never stable. And for example, when we have a storm, a tree collapses, falls on a power line, suddenly we have a, a drop in frequency. And then the grid operators can ping us, they literally do. They ping us and within a second, we can then deploy the battery again and we just get paid for offering this kind of service. That's the revenue side, that's how we make money. Obviously, it also comes with costs. And you know, I'm not gonna go too deep into the capex of putting the battery out and so on, but the operational costs that are important and that we as Entrix can influence are the degradation costs. Degradation basically means lifetime of the battery. Yeah? And what we want to make sure is that we use those grid scale batteries smarter than probably all of us use our smartphones. The way we use smartphones is the worst that we can do with lithium ion batteries. We basically run them down to below 10%, then overnight charge them up again to 100% that kills the cells. Yeah, so what we want to do is be a bit smarter about this and program our algorithms in a way that the lifetime is extended as much as possible. Yeah? And this then basically is the operational return that we generate and that is what we can then share um, in the end with the investors. That's the business logic. Yes? Very good question. Um, the key difference is that the wind farm uh, doesn't need to have someone who tells it what to do. It's the wind. So you are out of the game, basically. You can more or less decide on the overall revenue stack, but that's like a one-time decision, more or less, that you do. But with the batteries, you have to tell them live what to do. And most of the time, the investors, they probably wouldn't have the entire intelligence to basically predict what precisely is happening on the energy markets in a given moment of time. So after all, we do real-time trading on energy markets. And that's the key difference in intelligence that you need because the battery can go both ways, charge and discharge. So this is for investors who don't do their own trading on the market? Yes, precisely. Or who want to do it better, let's see. <laughs> and that's the general aspiration. Um, you know, last slide, briefly, on where do we stand with this? We actually just started in summer, so we're not live just yet. Um, but actually, we're moving quickly. Um, so we'll go live in the UK. Um, early next year, um, Germany and Australia are next out on the list. Um, so let's be hopeful that this all works out. Um, regulation, registration processes and so on, obviously a challenge, but so far it's looking good. Um, and you know, the reason why it can move so fast, because I think we've heard it before today, the availability of capital for such long-term infrastructure investments is limited to a certain extent. Um, the reason why we can move so quickly is because we're backed by Pelion, a Munich-based, uh, green infrastructure um, and sustainability fund. Um, and here we are part of basically an entire renewable ecosystem and renewable family. Um, so basically they're helping us, for example, to get access to batteries and so on. Um, yeah, and that's it. You know, uh, I said in the beginning, I think we're just at the start of the energy transition. So are we with Entrix. Um, but I think there are decades of growth and excitement uh, coming ahead. So uh, get in touch if you want to discuss more about it. Thank you.